All right, guys, thanks for being here. Um, on, on this section for today's call, we got King Mo on. Um, Mo, how do you say your first and last name? Or just your last name, I guess. My last name is Abu Ali. My first name is Muhammad. I know, yeah, first name Muhammad. Abu Ali? Yeah. Okay, cool. I got it. I mean, I'm used to everyone screwing up Tordowski, so that's why everyone just has my name as Zach T on there, but I can say Abu Ali. I got that down. So. Yeah. So, yeah, so, dude, your story, I wanted to have you on because your story is super cool. Um Last mm -hmm. month in January, you wrote fifty nine thousand dollars, right? Fifty seven or eight, yeah. Fifty seven. And then, how long have you been with us total for? I didn't even receive back end money yet. Eight months, nine eight months. months. What was your I'm best coming month? up on nine months? What was your biggest month so far? Do you think? Do you know what it was? Uh, my biggest month, deposit wise, was uh, or issue paid wise. Either way. Uh, my biggest months were both December and January. Got it. What did you do in December? So January was 57. What did you do in December? 55. 55. Cool. And then you're a full-time college student too, right? Yes, sir. Cool. So I think that's pretty awesome. Like this is your part-time job and you're, you're banging out more than, than most people do full-time, which is impressive, right? Yeah. So I, I don't want to go all over the place with this, but right now, what, what year are you in school? I'm about to graduate with associates. Okay, cool. And that's in May this year? Yeah, May I'll graduate associates. Nice. That's awesome, man. So so first thing I guess is like what what attracted you to the industry? Why did you start selling with us while you were still in college? And you know, like did you did you think you were gonna sell as much as you're selling right now when you first started? So before I started, well, it was just the opportunity that was given to me by my upline. Uh, Ronnie, I knew him since I was probably like 13 years old. We used to, I used to, I went from carrying him in Fortnite in a virtual game when I was like 13 to yeah. meeting him and working for him at his uh, pizzeria. And then uh, he ended up being my neighbor now. Now he's my neighbor. Got and um, yeah, he just gave me this opportunity one time I seen him and we were, we didn't probably talk for like a couple months before that. He's like, yeah, like I started this and I really would want you to do it. And he just, you just ran into him in person. He brought it up to you or did you see him on social media or, or what? No, I seen him in person. This is before Ronnie was even had a downline. He only had one downline at the time. Got it. How did he present it to you? Like what, what did he say that got you interested in the opportunity? Um, well, he said, it, it's uh, you work from anywhere. And I, uh, me going to college, that was a big thing for me. Because I would commit, like, run out of school to go to my job before. Got it. What, what, was your, to, what is it? What was your job before, yeah? I used to work with my dad. My dad owns a franchise of uh, Mr. Softy. You don't know what it is, but yeah, it's a thing that's on the east side. It's an ice cream business. Got it. Very cool. Um, and then, so once you got started... Once you got started with FF, or, so you, you decided to work with Ronnie because you could sell from wherever. Mm -hmm. You thought that the opportunity was a little bigger. You weren't going to have to run back and forth. How did you plan your schedule out to be able to be a full-time college student? Like how, how many hours a week are you doing college and studying and, and you know, in and out of classes and taking tests? Yeah. So the way I see it is um, Monday through Thursday um, in school. I don't do school work like Monday through Thursday. Um I got lucky enough, like most of my stuff is due on Sunday. So I'll bang it out like Friday night, Saturday night. And even if I wake up early on Friday or Saturday mornings and dialing isn't as busy because I'm dialing all day. And I'm sometimes in the middle of the week, I'm caught up on my leads. Yeah. That's how much hours I'm putting in. Like today I, I had three hours of class and I already have 200 dials. Still with three hours being in class and it's only five o'clock here. Yeah. So like, I, and I have a sale already today. I have multiple appointments scheduled, you know. What is your, what does your schedule look like from a weekly basis? So Monday, Monday, Wednesday, I have the same schedule. Tuesday and Thursday, I have the same schedule. Friday and Saturday, I just dial all day. And then Sunday, I'm off of work. Um, Monday, Monday through, like? Mo Monday through Thursday. So Monday, I come into school. I uh, start dialing right away. So I'm, di I'm, I'm here at before my class at 10 a.m., usually 9.30, 10 a.m. I'll start my dialing well, before I even have class. And then I have a class from 11.30 to 1 o'clock. 
and I go I go to the class sometimes like all, all jokes aside I go into the class just for my attendance because yeah. most of it is it's a lecture I walk out come right back down to my breakout room I, and then start down and then um so as soon as I'm done that my other class is from one o'clock to two thirty. And then today, um, which is Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday, I have the same schedule. I'm supposed to be in class from 12 to 2.55 on Tuesday okay. and Thursday. So a three-hour class. Got it. And then and then you're off on Friday and Saturday and just dial all day on those days, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Got it. So, <clears throat> I mean, the schedule thing is, it sounds like you just, you actually know your schedule, you stick to it and you have a plan of attack to go after everything, right? You're not just, you're not just kind of winging it. I think the hard thing, dude, is sometimes people who have nothing on their schedule, like think, oh man, I can just, I can just work all day whenever I want, but I can get this done first, or that done first. And I think it actually probably helps you because you're like, no, I have these few commitments I need to get done. Yeah. And you have to put your schedule around it. How many hours a week do you think you work doing insurance right now? Doing insurance? Yeah. Uh, 50 at least. Um maybe a little bit under 60. Got it. So you're working 50 hours a week plus probably doing, you know, 30 hours a week in um in college stuff, right? 30 to 40 hours a week there depending on how No, much in time. class I'm in, I'm in class for 12 12 Yeah, 12 hours a week in hours class, week. like in class but doing probably schoolwork in total I probably contribute like 6 hours too, so like 18 hours. You doing 18 hours a week of school stuff, right? Yeah. So Work, so you're working a good 60 to 70 hours a week every single week right what including is, school yeah and how old are you right now i just turned 21 you just turned 21 years old so have you always had that crazy work ethic or why do you, where do you think that comes from is that family thing? So it was it was my dad gave it to me honestly i when i was 17 years old i was working with my dad and i used to work 10 to 10 11 to 10 every single day um working with my dad was it was worth it. I was making eight to 10 grand a month, but I would work nearly 70, 80 hours a week. Got it. And your just dad never gave you anything. It sounds like he made you work to earn it. He showed you how to make money, but he never gave you everything you wanted. It was like, no, never gave me anything I wanted. Like right now, like, I, I don't even remember when was the last time I asked him for a dollar. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah. I don't remember when was the last time I asked him for a dollar and he gave me an opportunity to invest in his business and I took it when I was young and, you know, I invested in it and I made my money, you know, but I just didn't want to work 80 hours a week. Right. It was, and it was tiring. This business, right. You're like, oh, I can do, I can take that same work ethic I've learned and transfer into this business here. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, that's it's kind of, so I grew up the same way. Like my dad did well, my dad was a doctor, but they never gave me anything. He was like, no, I can, I can help you find somewhere to work in the summertime. You can mm -hmm. work at an office. Yeah, I can connect you with a friend. You can get a job. And it was always like teaching you how to make money instead of just giving you money is so valuable, right? Yeah. I think yeah, my dad never gave me. The last time he probably gave me a dollar was maybe when I was like 12 years old. Yeah. Last yeah, time I asked him for money. 12, right? What is it? I said, you've been a grown man since you were 12 years old, right? Probably, yeah. I used to work with Ronnie working 60 hours a week in his pizzeria to make 350 bucks a week. Hey, Ronnie's making sure you get paid a lot better now, right? Yeah, now I make I make that in a pot. You can make that in a thirty minutes on this. So, okay, so talk to me now about you've never had to invest into into your business before, really, right? Like you never had. No, to I invested with my dad. I invested in a business. I invested like when when he went off. I invested like twenty five thousand, but I made that back in less than it. Well, I want to say it probably took me like four months to make that investment back. Got it. What was that business? Uh, the ice cream. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And so what, when you started in this business, what did you, like, how much were you spending a week on leads in the beginning? And, you know, what did the return look like right off the bat? Yeah. Like so now? my first, my first two weeks, I was dialing the old leads, you know, like as so, unlike a lot of people, it does take, I understand some people take a lot longer to learn, but my first full day dialing, I closed like three sales. Yeah. Yeah, it was like and then the next day I went three for four or something like it was insane. So, um, you know, it took like my first week dialing old leads. 
it took me some time. Like the first two weeks, I probably made like five sales. Yeah. And then after that, I bought my own leads and I'm like, yo, I got to lock in. I'm spending money on these leads. And I complained about it being old leads and stuff like that, which I don't think really was the old leads. I really think it was me. So then I was like, I really got to lock in and focus. And I focused and I just started making money ever since, ever since then. Like, you know, what do you, think, what do you think you did your first day to be able to make a couple of sales? Like what were the couple of keys that helped you close on your first day? Um, not saying, keeping a conversation strong. So with me, my problem was I didn't know how to keep the conversation and I, you know, just freeze up and, you know, it would completely lose my confidence i feel like you being confident in this business is the number one thing that you have so if you're not confident in your talking in your ethic and the way you're helping somebody if you're not confident in that like that's it the sales done so like you're not going to get even close to presenting numbers or getting that person's banking and social because if you're not confident then you're not confident I think number one thing is you have to be confident. What do you think gave you confidence day one? Like why why did you feel really confident about what we were doing right off the first right off the first? Because I seen what everybody else was doing. So I knew it was I knew it was possible. Yeah. I knew that I wanted to be the like uh, when I come into the business, just when I worked with my dad, there's there was a lot of competition. There's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. Like competition wise, like people going out there making money and you want to be the number one person and at my age, I probably was the number, the number one person putting in the worth ethic and making the most money out of everyone. And that's the way I wanted to be. I wanted to be up on the leaderboards and it gave me confidence. So, yeah, absolutely. So what are a few things you think you do? So right now to write what you did last month, 57, what do you spend in a week on leads? Yeah. Um, every single week. What does that look like? So, um, don't 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 let anybody else i don't know if i want this to be recorded but um the, what i spend on with leads um no we don't want anybody else calling ronnie but he doesn't do this for anyone except his downlines but that's really the real thing i spend 1300 a week on leads yeah i think that's a i mean that that's a realistic i the whole time i was in the field i spent 1500 a week on leads every single week mm-hmm. and when i was new that got me 20 grand a month. When I got better, it got me 80 to 100 grand a month, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's just something as you get better. That's, but that's a really, re- that's still a good lead spend. You're still spending, you know, you're still spending over five grand every month on leads, which is a good Yeah, you're spending like 50, 300 on, on leads. And yeah. I invested, reinvested in a building, uh, in this uh, business, yeah. getting more states to acquire more leads. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask now. So, so how many, you're doing all virtual sales. It's mostly, are you doing um, final expense, mortgage protection, mixture of both? No. I, so the thing I do is um, uh, I work better. I was doing final expense recently. I was the first one out of Mahmoud, Mahmoud's team to switch to VA. And we got everybody to switch with me after they seen the numbers. Cool. Um, what is, uh, go through, go through a couple of things as far as like your phone script and your presentation goes with calling veteran leads. So the first key is um you don't want to come off as a salesman. So that's the way I see it. Um, I try not to come off as a salesman. I don't include any like discounted rate um, or, you know, uh, affordable or anything like that. So what's my mortgage when I do though? So when I first call, I'd be like, hey, this is Mike. I'm just giving you a call in regards to the request that you submitted for the new final expense and life options for veterans. And then I just go into there. Then I see here you left your date of birth as blah, 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 blah. And then I don't even, if they don't know what it is, still kind of I'll show them what it is. They'd be like, hey, what? It, like I still don't understand. Some people, you say discounted and final expense options. Some people still wouldn't know veterans. So I'd be like, yeah, this was so veterans get something in place. God forbid if they passed at their burial. Or leaving something behind is taken care of for their loved ones. And then they'll know right away, hey, it's for life insurance. Yeah. And then um, I'll go into that, like, what military branch did you serve in? Um, thank you for your service. Make them feel proud of themselves. And then go into, you know, um, if they have a service-connected disability. If they do, you know, you're working with somebody that has more money. They're not on the low-income side. 
So then we'll go over if they already have life insurance, if they do, trying to beat that number, or if they're really trying to just add more coverage. Some people, even if you can beat their price, they'll be like, hey, I've been with this company for five, six years. I'm not switching over to a different company. Um, oh, did you want to add more coverage? Yes, I was looking to add more coverage. Show them adding more coverage, how much it would cost them, and showing them you know, their options as well. Yeah. Makes sense. What are a couple of the biggest objections you get? And then how do you overcome those? So I don't get social objections. I probably get one like once a month. Yeah. And banking is probably the number one objective is not even banking. I want to say the number one objective is even getting to show somebody numbers. Right. That's the number one objection I have getting to show somebody <laughs> numbers. So with the VA, I already got things taken care of. Hang up. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, I already uh, I'm talking to somebody else about getting coverage, hang up, or I already paid up for my barrier. Like I overcome social, uh, like I'm, I overcome all objections. If I'm getting to like present and picking a plan and then getting their social, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't remember when was the last time I got a social objection, honestly. So the objections that you get prior to, because once you go through numbers, it should be a wrap, right? And the only reason, if anyone's getting a social or banking objection, it's because they don't trust you. Yeah. So what do you think are a couple of things you do in the presentation to get your clients to trust you so that yeah. by the time you're showing them that numbers in the application and you're yeah. for their social and their bank, they're not giving you kickback? So the first thing I do is um, when I start the application, I have three tabs open. I have my ringy, one my carriers second and all the quote tools. And then as well as my lychee is before actually my, the ringy. And then I also have a true people search. Mm -hmm. So what I do is as soon as I get to like, Hey, we're going to start the application. I start typing right away, type their name, their last name, date of birth, phone number. And then at the same time, at the, I take their phone number, attach it into, to, into the true people search. So when I start the application, I'd be like your first name, last name, blah, 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 blah. And then we get to like right before the social, you're going to get to that social really quickly. But before they even give me your social, their social, I'll be like to them, hey, I, I'm the true people search to show you their address. I'll be like, hey, I got your address as this. So I feel like that really, as soon as I started doing that, that's when I was banging out policies. I'm like, I just learned, I did it myself. It's not in the script. I just did it. I started doing it myself. And I just started throwing them out. I feel like it builds trust, you know, that, oh, wow, this guy already knows my address. Like, he, you know, he's connected to systems and that. And right now as well, we're doing the thing where we would plug them into Transamerica, get the last four of their social, and then give them that as well. Yeah. If I feel like they're, if it, I feel like it's a person that's going to give me a social objection, I'll definitely do that. But if I feel like I have enough trust, I'll just straight up ask them for their social. Yeah. So that's what it, that's all it is. Um, and don't feel like you're down. Like don't, uh, at first I show them numbers, be excited that they're going to start the application, but I'd be so scared that I'm going to get a social objection. So I'll, I'll be all over the place, you know? And then I feel like that was what, was what was holding me back from getting a social objection. And now I'm like, they don't give me a social. Like, I don't know what to, like I'm helping them. So I'd be like, if somebody like what the one time a month that I get a social objection, I'd be like, man, he didn't even want coverage at that point. I, I know it's yeah, not that, me. That's a that's someone's gonna charge back anyways, right? So yeah. Um yeah, I think I think you're right. As long as you proceed to the application, where people mess that up is where they act like they get really excited, you know, they're like, Oh, hey, like, can I get your social, your bank? Like you just have to ask that question the same way you ask for their phone number, their height, their weight, mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah. So all right, so you're uh your first eight months in the business, you've obviously done really well. What's the What's the best, what's the coolest thing or your favorite thing you've done with the money you've made so far? What, what, what have I done? Yeah. I haven't spent it. You have it? No. Okay. I thought, I thought Ronnie told me you just bought a new car, but I could have been wrong. No. So I was supposed to buy the crazy part is I was, I was supposed to buy a car. So me and Ronnie, you know, we're going to the bank. I went to the bank. I was going to make a withdrawal to buy it. Like, this is crazy because I, I thought I would never be this wealthy enough to go do what I was about to do. So I was like, you know what? Like, I don't want to, I don't want to get a new car with interest. Like interest rates are high. I was like, I'll just go buy a car cash. <laughs> so I walk into the bank. I'm like, yeah, I want to withdraw. How much do you want to withdraw? $70,000. And then they're like to me, no, nah, you can't, you got to go to like 12 branches. You can only do 5,000 from each branch. I was like, man, I don't got time for that. 
So may I walk out with just five thousand dollars, and I still have the money in my pocket, the five thousand dollars, because I don't carry cash. Got it. So you did not end up going through with the car thing. I remember. Yeah. Was- so long story short, I go there. I will. Uh, I was like, you know what? Let me just wire it to myself to my other bank account. That's like they'll give me seventy thousand cash in one day. I wired. I wired the money into my other bank account, and. I went to the car dealership and the car was just a no go. Like it had check engine light, and I was like, "Nah, never mind." Okay, yeah. good. Well, I I think that's a good thing. I was I was hoping you didn't do that, but I was going to ask you anyway. You can you can use that money to reinvest in your business or buy something that makes you money. So, yeah, hey, dude, I appreciate it. It's really cool what you're doing. I hope you talk to other college kids about what you're doing, give them the same opportunity because I think uh, I think you're a really good example of what people should be doing right out of college, making money and and not you know, not looking for handouts, but going out and getting it. So I yeah. And and the number one thing is, yeah, don't spend it on dumb things. Like I have, I had payments. Yeah. Like when I, when I first started this business with Ron, that's when I got my first car. Yeah. Uh, I had an $800 car payment yeah. for me. I'm just this type of person. If I have payments, I'm going to go out there and get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm still going to go out there and work 10 times harder. So that's kind of what dragged me into getting a car in the first place. Cause I feel like ever since I stopped having that car, stopped having payments, I'm like, I don't care. I have no payments, but I, yeah. it, it, it really makes you hungry when you have payments. Like if that doesn't, it shouldn't give you an excuse to be like, Oh, like I already got what I want. No, you have payments, you know, yeah. work harder. You can make, I can potentially make a car payment in 30 minutes with one sale. You know what I you know what I would do instead of car payment or backing yourself in a corner like that? Hire a staff, hire a personal assistant, someone like that. You're employing someone, you can get them to do all the stuff you don't want to do, and it's it's worth more than a car. It's worth more than yeah, when you're reinvesting your business. Like Ron, when I started VA before everybody, we're in final expense. Final expense charges back more than VA. Final expense, you're working with lower income people, so they're gonna charge back more. Like yeah. probably 30 percent, 40 percent is charging back for sure. Yeah. The final expense. That's the way I seen it. Or that's the way it was to me. So yeah. then I would go out there. And when I started it, Ron was like, you, you need to spend like this much on states. I had six states at the time, just off of final expenses. I think I had Washington, Oregon, um, Alabama, Kentucky, and PA. So no, I had five states. And then I bought 20 states. I spent $2,000. I was like, man, like, whatever, I'm going to spend this $2,000. My first day I got my teeth kicked in, didn't make a sale. And I was spending more on leads. And I'm like, did I make the right decision? Mm-hmm. Then I ended off that week selling $32,000 issuing paid. My first week, issue paid 32000 There you go. How do you beat that, right? Well, I, yeah. you got, I think that's a great place to wrap up. I appreciate the time today. And I hope, uh, like I said, man, I hope you keep you keep sharing what you're doing with people and give other people this opportunity to the same thing because uh, it's a really awesome story. And I, I really appreciate you pouring into us today. Yes, of course. All right. Thanks, guys. See you all later.